Welcome to Mirth, Magic, and Mayhem, the AARPG's new actual play series using the Dragonbane RPG by Free League Publishing. I'm Nathan, your host, co-GM, and I'll also be playing Brains, the idiot Wolfkin thief. Let's meet my friends and fellow cast members. I'm Malcolm, your co-GM, and I'll also be playing Corinne Reinsmith, the judgy halfling bard. Uh, hi, I'm Tyr, and I'll be playing Dane Ringson, a human scatterbrain scholar. Hi, I'm Chris, and I'm playing Sigurd, Elfin Huntress. Hey all, this is Anthony, and I play Kurgan, and he wants to remind you, You should go and get stuffed! Hello everyone, this is Sean, and I will be playing Baylor Banefire, Dwarf Artisan Specialist. I'm Tim, AARPG's latest temporary double seeker probationary player. I play Quiverwing, the enchanting mallard whose spellbinding plumage shivers like distant lightning on a moonlit night. Together, We'll explore ancient secrets of a long-forgotten empire, facing challenges and forging our destiny in a world where every castle, cave, and crypt holds the echoes of a bygone era. Get ready for an epic journey filled with laughter, suspense, and unforgettable moments in the Misty Vale. All right, you ready? Absolutely yes. not, because I do not recall what we were doing. But let's go ahead and get started and fall and dive into Dragonbane. We're playing a game, guys. Look Hello at that. and welcome to the Advanced Age Role Playing Gamers Podcast. I'm Nathan. I'm your host tonight, but I am not your GM. Malcolm's your GM. Uh, this is episode six of our Dragon Bane game. So come join uh, Sigan, uh, Corinne, Dane, uh, Corgan, uh, Bale. Uh, well, Bale Banefire is not here. Uh, Quiverwing isn't here. Uh, and Brains. That's we me. are missing a quite a Who number of my, Maybe you, here, but really isn't. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's here, here but not too. really all yeah. there. <laughs> so, um, Malcolm, I'm going to pass things over to you. But uh, since it's probably been a while since uh, Tony's been here, it'd probably be good to do a little quick uh, character intro for everybody. Uh, Malcolm, over to you. Okay, um, let's go with character intros. Intros. We'll skip the end, the current day. Uh, well, well, actually, let's start off with you, uh, Tyr. Let's go with your character first. Uh, hi, I'm Tyr, and I am playing Dane Ringson, a somewhat absent-minded scholar character who uh, is enjoying the party, but not the situation we are currently in. Hi, right, Chris. Hi, I'm playing uh, Sigurd. Uatavanvartia, the elf huntress, uh, who is also not too crazy about where we find ourselves with everybody touching things they shouldn't and angering spirits. Not my fault. Kupo, let's go ahead and dive into that one. That's <laughs> <laughs> your clueless, and I'll just fill you in in a second. <laughs> I'm uh, uh, Corrigan uh, Stonehammer. I'm a uh, dwarf and. Uh, Happy. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just, just trying to help you. Clearly, I'm a halfling, and uh, I guess I like to mix it up a bit. So, but I, I'm a bit in, inexperienced, but I'm here to help. I'm calling him a horfling. <laughs> Would that be just a horse? <laughs> uh, I'm so glad Corgan's here. He's my best friend. Hello, I'm Brains. I'm a uh, a wolfkin a thief. And uh, these guys are super surprised that I actually have skills, and I don't quite understand why they were surprised that I can do things. Oh, well, uh, just because we haven't seen any of them yet. Mm. Anyway. What, what are okay. the skills? I'm done. And um, <laughs> accompanying them tonight, I will be having my character, which is uh, Con Reinsmith, uh, who is a halfling bard who will be accompanying the party and currently is holding the only source of light that is contained. When we last left our players, and more importantly, our characters, they had <laughs> chosen to investigate. <laughs> they had chosen to investigate the Ridger Mount. They had followed the rumor that said, on the side of the Iron Forest, there is an unholy place with a huge stone rising into the sky, in the Ritter Mound, it is called. 
named after the Dark Knight, who was chained by the gods Batman. when the world was young. They say that he was buried alive, and it is in that mound, along with his family, his servants, and all his riches. That was one rumor they heard, but they had also been hired by a particular group to find another missing piece of the statue of a great dragon emperor, Aradain. Hopefully they can be found in that crypt. They simply dismissed it as being one of his knight's crypts and nothing more than that. But upon arriving, there had been some evidence that they weren't the only ones here searching. Goblins, having left evidence by their footprints and excrement, apparently had already entered the mound ahead of them. Searching several rooms, they found both ransacked sarcophagi as well as the brutalized bodies of goblins that had made an unfortunate encounter. They did happen to also find one alive, hiding in the crypt among the uh, bones and remains of possibly the servants of this mysterious knight. And then eventually find themselves entering a chamber where there sat a lady. Well, a desiccated corpse would be more appropriate at first. A clawed hand clutching a morning star, I believe, <laughs> and wearing golden chainmail. As it drew closer, she was supplanted by a glowing figure of a woman dressed in glowing and silver and gold chainmail, who floated above them and spoke the ancient tongue, talking of a dragon knight and her service to Elodie and being a wielder of fiend crusher, and that they must depart and do nothing more here. But of course, they were here on a mission. And they had a destiny to fulfill. Doors needed to be opened, and weapons of magic power were touched. And in that last moment, her beautiful and sublime face transformed into a death mask, her eyes falling away into pits of the void. And she raised her ghostly visage in terror and in fierce, retributive anger, screaming in the ancient tongue, I am the wielder of the fiend gushers, and I now crush you. And we were going to roll initiative. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's incorrect. It's a dragon bane. We are now going to draw initiative. Ah. So, um, since we're not all together, I will simply just uh, shuffle the cards and randomly pick them. I mean, that's going to foil the plan of Kubo having those cards in his pants, but... It will. <laughs> this, will this will stop the usual... Wait, uh, dang, mm. damn it! <laughs> <laughs> he always has cards in his pants. Always. Uh, we have the uh, initiative cards. Okay. So, uh, who would like to draw the first one? Uh, just to, I say assign them randomly. Just go with it. Okay. Nathan. Okay. Five. Five. Tier. Seven. Chris. Three. Kupo. Six. Corinne. One. And for the ghostly lady. <laughs> two and four. Ooh, shells. Oh. Um, what's the ghostly lady's name? She has not told you her name. Oh, I know her name already. Oh, she says that she is the wielder of Fiend Crusher and servant of Elidane. I think I related. I relayed yeah, that she did. part back to everyone. Yes, and before, her struggle. Yeah, before brains grabbed the hammer. Yes, and the struggle she the struggle that has been between corruption and the cleansing fire. As far as the description of the room, as I said before, uh, I'll just sort of go over that just so you have an idea of what's in here. Basically, the room is, you know, the same room you guys saw through the Procolises before. It uh, has, you know, at this point, one burning torch on the wall. I believe that someone retrieved the other torch. Yeah, Quiverwing has the other torch. Quiverwing has the other torch. Um, and, the, and behind her, she's sitting at, she, her corpse was sitting at a table. Uh, it still effectively is, or at least was, sitting at a table, and behind her was a iron-fitted oak door with a uh, sort of ancient symbol. And the symbol, I believe, that Dane, you had seen to be another, another sort of like sigil of the um, 
Oh, the Dragon Emperor. Yeah, it was a, a, it was a, a stylized crown. crime. It, yeah, yeah stylized crown. crown. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Quiverwing had informed you that the torches did de- indeed burn with a magic fire, and that was pretty evident. Some of the you know, blue sparks within it, but they still were they still were hot. It still was radiating heat, as far as you know. I don't think anyone set anything on fire yet, but you know, it's. Well, I, I put my hand next to it to feel the heat to make sure that it was real. Mm-hmm. Yes, he did. Um, and so well, that's that's the basics of how the room uh, looks like. I would say it's you know probably a the room is a rectangle um, about mm, about eight meters by. Uh, you know, eight by twelve meters, as far as the room size, with the uh, oaken door behind you in the center of the uh, northern wall, a porcullis on the on the east, west, and south wall. You do know the one on the east exit of the wall is the one you guys came through. The western one was corroded and you couldn't get through, as well as the one on the south. So those are though that you can see through them. There, they per as far as time you guys tried them, the locks as well as the overall joints of the mechanisms were pretty much corroded to the point of being immovable. It would take physical force or some powerful magic to open said doors without assistance. Now, the goblin that we had with us, Grub, is he, he yes, took is, off. he took off. That's what I meant. Okay. <sighs> Yeah. As a matter of fact, would, he took Chish. off as soon as you know someone. As soon as she started speaking as a ghost form, and Quivering went to go grab him. So oh, he has okay. left the room to go fight him before she erupts into becoming this horrible visage. As I recall, that's that's sort of what we'll do for now, as far as mechanically. Oh, okay. So he'll be able. They'll be able to enter the fray at a later initiative. Now. Um, there are certain things you can do as far as your, your uh, initiative numbers. They can be traded. They can you can uh, choose to switch them, and you can even if so if you want to switch them, you can try to elect to switch them even with the monster itself or the creature. I don't know if anyone wants to go first. <laughs> do we notice any improvised uh, weapon weaponry around the room? Yes. In addition. Yeah, there are some sort of like improvised weapons that could be utilized in the room. Room, um, in this particular case, there's only really two. Uh, there is a puddle of water, but the ghost does not appear to be necessarily touching the floor. And there is, of course, the torch on the wall. Okay. Mm, okay. So we so we drew so we're, we're in initiative Actually, I'll now. Just, yeah, you've drawn you've drawn your initiatives. Okay. Um, if you'd like, we can go ahead and get started, unless you guys have a choice you want to switch and move. As far as, let me try and see if there's a, I'm trying to think if we can, typical actions, um, obviously there's movement, which would be considered dash, a melee attack, range attack, you can parry or dodge. I understand you usually have one action per combat round, okay? Unless you are some sort of creature being of some sort. You can pick up an item, um, equip yourself or unequip an item, um, provide thirst first aid, rally a a companion who is. You know, rally is usually is done when a companion is at zero hit points. Break down or pick a lock, break down a door, use an item, activate an ability. In the case of a, of a spellcaster, that'd be like uh, casting a spell, um, doing a help maneuver, which you help another character give them a boon on their roll, if you can logically make sense to me as far as to do that. And uh, you can r- a round of rest, which means you do nothing that particular round and just recover uh, willpower. So uh, rounds, as far as you understand, run about, ter- about like a 10 second duration as far as what they are in the real world. Okay? Okay. okay um, I charge thermonuclear weapon. Excellent. Well, we'll do that on your turn. (laughs) Do you know what your initiative card is again? I do. Six. Okay. So on one, initiative one, Corinne will spend um, willpower points in order to use her musical ability uh, to give a bane. A bane. It was actually, my my ability is to give a boon. We'll go over that real quick. The boon to the party uh, is what she's hoping to do with her <laughs> musical ability. I hope so too. <laughs> Not a uh, uh, yeah, so basically uh, she will 
pull out her lute and, be, and put the lantern down and began singing and she moved slowly to the corner in uh, order to uh, basically be able to give all of her uh, all of her allies within 10 meters of her a boon on their rolls hmm. and that's what she'll be doing for this initiative so right. uh, let's just see if she can pull that off yes so considering the size of the room and the number of you I would suspect that most of you I would say all of you are within the range of the music what kind of song is it it's ska or it is not a ska that is not something she does L- light jazz no more yeah maybe I mean it- Karen Karen has chosen a a sort of um bolstering sort of fight song to inspire and uh, to uh to, in, to rally without you guys falling necessarily you to uh, the sticking point I guess but something rousing and, and uplifting for the party so not a dirge not a dirge oh, something yet. that talks about bringing light and something not yet <laughs> yeah, <I'm saying. laughs> but yes that's what she sings and so that means that all of you will get for this round um, a boon on your rolls okay it, it, me is it just this round? Is it evaporate next round? She's going to have the cheek key spinning. Yeah, I think it's just oh, okay. this round, if I remember correctly. Uh, musician, uh, the effect lasts until your turn next round. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Great. So that is what she will do. Great. That is quickly followed by the actions of the lady. Dun dun. And we will roll to see what an action will be. She gives up. And she, hmm, what? <laughs> <laughs> she draws herself up before uh, Siggy. Mm. I didn't touch the thing. He touched the thing. She oh. towers over you, looking down with her cold pit that once were eyes, staring directly into her soul with her dead, vacuous orbs. You see, your life, their past before you, as long as it has been, all through your time in the forest and beyond, pass through their eyes, but it has been distorted into a torment, a tormented and grotesque vision of all the friends, and even some of the foes, that have passed since you have been here on this world. Oh, Jersey City. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> The victim. You become scared. And you get a bane on your wheel roll. Ouch. You suffer a fit attack, and we'll go to the results of that uh, real quick, as far as how you must counter that, or if there is any counter. This is one thing I wanted to sort of, like... It's very interesting about uh, Dragon Bane, is um, how their monsters function, but you'll get the hang of it. If I can or you'll die. Page. Yeah. <laughs> or you will die. <laughs> no, shoot. Didn't want that happen. So. So we'll just uh, roll a 1d8. I guess I can, I can roll it, or if you want to, you can roll it. It's fine. Uh, roll 1d8. Mm-hmm. This is your fear table effect. I got, got a three. Okay. <laughs> well, do, doesn't it have to make a... Doesn't she have to make a fear yeah, you're save right. You do first? have to make a fear roll. So make a will roll at... at it's going to be, obviously, as I said before, it's going to be uh, at, a, a at a bane. Yeah. But because you have already a boon to all your rolls, it's just a standard roll. Because okay. Corinne is in it. I get a nine. Is that under your will? That is under my will. By all right. A, a lot. Oh, good. Then you are able to resist and not fall into despair, but you are currently, I think it says, under the effect of being feared. Yeah. So that is still the condition that you have, though. Okay? Gotcha. Right. I am marked. You can just mark that. Um, I mean, scared, sorry, not feared, scared. Yep. And you mark that under your wisdom box. Yep. Okay. Um, all right. That is our attack, too. I'm, is- I'm number three. Oh. Um, can I use my um, myths and legends to determine whether or not any of the weapons I have might be effective against a spirit? 
Yes. Did you make that roll? Yeah. That's, uh, is this under a boon or just yes, the entire round, a, right? this, this okay. will be a boon. Yeah. Thank God, because the, the first roll missed horribly. The second roll was a four. So I made that one. Although you may not have encountered ghosts before or such spirits as this, and you know, you have been told, and you know several legends, that mortal weapons will have no effect upon them, these immaterial beings. They are immune to them and ignore their overall bite of steel, be it, or silver. But magic weapons do have an effect. Magic itself does, as far as being able to trouble them, as well as fire. <laughs> Ooh, fire. So, uh, in but my move then, I will... You- Mm-hmm. Dive. One thing you, mm-hmm. Go ahead. Go, Go ahead. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, you're gonna and you also know that, you know, even though some ghosts have been physically dissipated by fire or magic, they will return until their task is satisfied though. But the leg tactics are perfectly good then. Okay. So her corpse is still sitting at the table holding the uh the weapon? Or is the ghost now holding the material weapon? I can't remember who grabbed the material weapon. Who grabbed for it? Brains. I did. Brains. Brains is holding the material weapon, I believe. So Yeah, so then she's got a spectral version of it? Yeah, hers is a spectral version. Then I will dive for the torch. Okay. That's probably across the room where I am, so I will spend my time going to that. Yes. So what you're going to do, I mean, because you can only do an action, you made your, you made your score roll, so next you'll be just dashing for the... For, okay. Yeah. All right. And that was three. Uh, she goes on four. Mm. <laughs> so um, seeing those moving around her, people flying and running to get torches, grabbing, a, grabbing you know, her mace, she, her face sort of... Her, almost her jaw sort of drops far too wide and far too open and she screams a horrible horrible chilling scream that seems to freeze the very soul of everyone within 10 meters mm. so you suffer a fear attack if everyone can give me a will roll because uh, you have already been given the death stare I'm afraid Siggy you'll be making this will roll um, standard as opposed to at a boon. The rest of us make it at Ooh. boons, though. Yeah. Yep. Correct. Because yep, I, I still made it. Got exactly the same roll, nine. I got a 12 and mine is 14. Thank goodness I made it at a boon. I uh, I have a 12 and I rolled an 11. So. And what about I... Yeah, he's what so about you're, we're, <laughs> what about oh, I'm sorry, T- Tony, you're uh, rolling two d twenty, and you're trying to get under your uh, roll low, so under your will. Mm-hmm. Yes, Corgan. Okay, um, I'm trying to get under. Yeah. Yes. For one second. Roll okay. low. My will seems to be a sixteen. Okay. Yeah. So and good I will. Thirteen. Then you too, like the rest of your party here is able to resist the bone-chilling scream given off by the disquieted spirit. She rages. One thing I don't really know, Mm -hmm. uh, I am not trained in... Well, uh, well, I guess I have... I guess I have hammers, but is that what it'd be? Would it be a hammer? Yeah, you would just use hammer. Okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna take this thing, uh, her her weapon, and try and whack her with it. What uh, is your strength? My strength is thirteen. Okay. Thing uh, is, you are able to wield it. Oh, good. Now I suck at hammers, but it's in my hand, so I'm gonna try to use it. Plus, plus the boon. Yeah, the boon. But yeah. are you the god of hammers? No, uh, no, and no. No, I I uh, I try to, to 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 lunge at her with it, and I'm just not used to the to the weight of this thing, and I uh, I whiff. Yes, being uh, she, uh, yes, you swing at her, but unfortunately, you do not connect with the hat with the uh, small warhammer. Um, who's next? I think it's me. Mm-hmm. 
So uh, I'd like to use my crossbow and shoot her in the face. Okay. Now, what I don't know mechanically mm-hmm. is uh, how many bolts do I have and how are we working? Uh, we had 12 bolts to start with. Okay. And so uh, rolling, I have, I have a 14 for crossbow, so... Um, Under is better. Enter is the only way to succeed. And it's two twenties. No, yes, two twenties at this current time because you have it at a boon. Okay, let's do it. Oh, Nelly, I got an eight. Okay. <laughs> Everyone, pay attention. To what Kubo's cat's doing on the chair behind Kubo? I don't want to do Losing. that. Well, Aww. She, she was cleaning a very private part. <laughs> that, that's a, that's that tells you what what that, uh, that, what yeah, what that. she what she feels about this podcast. Yeah. Uh, that's what we all feel. Free input. <laughs> you fire your boat through and sure. It sails right through what would have been her neck, passing through her like she's a gossamer cloud of iridescent mist. Uh, and you hear it clatter somewhere in the distance behind her. Do you, do you mind if I go back and get that? Those are very expensive. And, well, um, they are, but she doesn't seem like she's listening. She keeps shouting in the old tongue, but you do not understand. But you do understand me. You don't mean understand the words, but you understand the, the pronunciation. <laughs> like, no, I don't care. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> it's all in how she says it. Yeah, it's all in how she says it. Uh, I am on seven. What will you do now? Dan? So... Dane knows what she's screaming. Yes. Um, I imagine it's quite... It's not. We don't need to translate it. Uh, Probably not. <laughs> Dane would like to know if he recalls from any of his myths and legends um, if guardian spirits like this are tied to a place and if so, by what? Maybe the body? Or an item? Or something like that? I mean, what is your missing legends? Uh, it's at 13. Okay. Basically, as far as what you know, you can, if you want to, you can give me a roll if you want to have the best roll. Yeah, that's fine. You. Okay. I mean, I have I have a boon, right? So. Yeah, you, you do have a boon. First one already succeeds. Second one, same number. Definitely succeeds. S- six, on a, six on a 13. Okay. So, you do know that as far as guardian spirits, it depends on the nature of what they're bound to do. Some are bound physically by some item or some object to help them recoalesce to a certain period or place. Others are bound by a duty or curse or, or, or quest laid upon them. Like, they can be like, it is your duty to guard this thing until the end of time or until such and such rises again. Other things is they are tied to a tragedy that has happened in a place, and if someone finds a certain thing or helps them find some rest, they can be released. Um, it's a matter of finding out what it is for a particular spirit. Um, but it's one thing that is very interesting is that almost creatures cannot be dealt with in some way. You do know that ghosts can be reasoned with if you can find some place of reason. If you have not crossed a line or broken something or gone a great violation of their particular edict, for instance, you know, that can be useful. This may not be, this may not work here, but you're more than willing, but you can, of course, try. Like, for instance, even, you know, even like, you know, there may be something you could say that does pertain to her particular calling and mission, yeah. which is what she's here to protect and deal with. Yeah, it, it was more is is the is the is the spirit tied to the corpse? Um, possibly. It's okay. possible, but you think is like you've already seen that you know, like for instance, that um, that brain is snatched, you know, snatched the yeah, snatched up the, the, the warhammer. That, you know, she even uses a part of her title, which she has not used to swing at anybody in in her ghostly form as of yet, you know, which basically sort of, you know, broke the, you know, sort of pulled her, you know, broke a finger or two doing that. So it could be that item, but you don't really know. But it doesn't doesn't seem, based on her her words that you were hearing, it appears to be a duty that holds her here. Okay. And her fight against chaos serving the, you know, the the, uh, cleansing flame. 
Duty. So then what Dane is going to do on his turn is he is going to yell out as like, Baylor, try the torch on the corpse. And he is, and Dane is going to run to the door, to the oaken door. All right. I forgot that Bailey was here. Yes, he is. And he's holding a torch. So. He's holding a torch. So. Yes. Are you ready to rock? More importantly, are you ready to roll? Welcome to No Quest for the Wicked, an award-winning sci-fi actual play podcast using Paizo's space opera system, Starfinder. Stow away with us every other Wednesday as four best friends explore an entirely homebrew setting in a planet-hopping adventure that plunges the crew of the Maverick into a political and cosmic conspiracy that doesn't just put their lives at risk, but the system and even the whole universe. Join Merrick, the four-armed warrior in self-imposed exile as he breaks tradition and forges his own path with a passion hotter than the desert sun. Durin, a former assassin running from his dark past hoping to make a new life for himself. And Cody, an android with memory problems, an obsession with the 80s, and a desperate need to find the boy who made him. New episodes every Wednesday on NoQuestCast.com or your favorite podcasting app. All right. So, um, for his action, Baylor will try and swing at the gate with the torch. Well, yes. I said I said the corpse. The corpse? Oh, okay. He will hit the corpse with the torch. Okay. And um, it immediately catches, like, is you know the body's burning. Uh, the uh, the mummified corpse begins spraying versus a sort of torn to flame. This does not seem to. I mean this. You can see that the actual hair on the ghost also begins to sort of move upward like it's being blown by the wind, but it's not, you know, that's the only indication there's some connection between her and the corpse. There's no fire that springs upon it. But there is a rage that seems to grow in there. I can see so much better now, thank you. It was worth a try. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's, well, that's, that's about it. Okay, and then, like I said, Dane is moving towards the oaken door. So You're moving can... towards the oaken door. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think that concludes the uh, turn around for everyone here. Yep. So yes. we will begin initiative again. All right. Pull me a card, sir. I'm working on. Shuffle them first. <laughs> <laughs> can you draw me 50? No one can read into a three deck shoot. All right. This is. Hey, since you're so eager. Five, Five again. I don't think you shuffled You're six last well. time. That's Here. Fine. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever gets this, fuck you. We'll just say Karen. <laughs> You're in. <laughs> uh, Chris. Seven. Seven. Kupo. Four. Four. All right. Uh-oh. The ghost has a two, two? <laughs> and a six. Okay. All right. So one now, before me. Like one. I said before, you can switch or trade or try and or, or trade initiative with another person in the combat. That includes the opponent as well. So do, do they have to be willing to trade? No. Is that your action? Um, I don't really know. That'd be kind of weird if it were, because as far as you, if I think it's just, I don't think it's your action, but Nathan, look it up. Oh, uh, that was like a maneuver. This is your turn to look up stuff. Why I'm G. I'm looking. (laughs) I'm looking. Because me personally, I'd want Corinne to take that too, and give us all a boon again. Well, she would still be giving the boon until the end. It's until her her turn. Oh, okay. Uh, All right. Yeah. 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 Okay. so, So. You can only swap with someone later than you, so you can wait. Okay. So on your turning the round, you can choose to wait. This means that you swap initiative cards, and there are there are places in the initiative order with another creature whose turn comes after yours. You can swap cards with other player characters as well as NPCs, and they cannot refuse to trade. Uh, However, you cannot swap initiative cards with anybody who has already had their turn or who themselves chose to wait earlier in the round. Okay. Okay. So who's, but she's going first, right? 
Yeah, she's going first. She's going on two and six. Yeah. So that means... Um, I'm, on, I'm on five. So for her first action, the lady wielding the ghostly fiend crusher. I will do this randomly. <laughs> Brain is standing there before uh, you wielding, holding her her warhammer. She reaches out and a hand penetrates right through your chest. Ooh. Reaching and grabbing for your heart. I do not consider the chill cold fills your very chest and tendrils of fingers begin closing on your heart as it slowly beats slower and slower. And you take Oh god. Um <laughs> don't like the sound of that at all. Oh god. 18 points of damage. Holy shit. And you become scared as a condition. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you possibly become dead. <laughs> you, think you could possibly become dead. As okay, so so I have 12 hit points. Okay, so you reduce them automatically to zero. There is no negative yeah. in Dragon Bane. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and go over the read over the rules about being reduced to zero. And I'm scared. It is, it is not. <laughs> You know, um, it is not instant death. I would actually, for you, take uh, I think twenty-four points mm, yeah. instantly kill you. So you can go <laughs> ahead and review the rules for uh, for being at zero. Um, but yes, he's like, and you see the sort of chill, a nice sort of as she withdraws her hand, almost sort of form over his chest as he clumps the gra- slumps to the ground, <gasps> and it's she like wheels towards her next victim. Ghost. Tim is definitely going to be like, hey, you like me now. <laughs> <laughs> so I thump onto the floor. So four. Who's four? Four. Was that you? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, okay, yes. So, um... You saw your crossbow had absolutely no effect. On yes. It. I. So, and I'm seeing the... And I'm observing the idea of uh, trying to burn... Uh, a corpse, or... Is there anything else that I can see that I can smash? You can smash. Well, there's a table she's sitting at. There's her corpse, which is currently on fire. And there is a door, but that will take some strength. Yes, you can probably smash that. It looks bound in iron. Um, that's it. And currently right now, I believe the dwarf, uh, Balor Banefire, is using a common torch on the body. Siggy has dashed and cra- snatched up my magic torch. is currently in her hand. Um, as far as things on fire, there is a lantern sitting in front of Corinne. She's put it down so she can play her instrument, so she is not wielding that, but it could possibly be smashed to get something. If you're looking for things to burn, as far as things to break, that is the currently on bottom on flaming corpse, the chair she's sitting in, the table she's at, and the door that sits behind her. The table that she's at, is there anything, uh, do I see runes, or uh, is there anything special about it? No, it appears to be a very plain table, though obviously it must be well built to have survived so long. But you do remember Quiver Ring having said something about things being preserved here longer than they should be, possibly due to alchemy or something. Ah, I think I might uh, use my turn to evade. <laughs> okay. Round. I should Probably bravely run away. Decision. Yes. Uh, let's okay. see. How do I do? I get... Oh, thank God. I get a 9 out of 14. Uh, so, uh, under 14, I got a 9. Well, I think that's uh, just a reaction, though, so you don't have to evade unless... You don't you... have to evade until she actually attacks you. Ah. You're just ready and poised you to can, Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Bravely. Bravely. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> bravely, bravely evade. And that was uh, four. Yeah. four. Now we're on to five. Yeah. Five. Which is my role. Uh, so I am going to uh, make my death save. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try to rally myself to... I don't uh, know if you can rally yourself. Yeah, you can rally yourself, but it's at a, at a bane. Well, you do oh, have, okay. but you do have a boon because it's still not Corinne's turn. But I already have a bane for being scared, so there's, yeah. So what the well, if you have ma- two banes, then it cancels out her one, her one boon. So yeah, have a, one, so one, she, so he's still, yeah, so she's still. Bane. But I'm gonna try. I'm gonna make my death save first, and so I roll that. 
Uh, how does that work exactly? Oh, uh, I will read that out. For the, for the audience at home, I, I know. <laughs> On your turn, in, uh, in each subsequent round, you make a, must make a death roll. A roll against your con. The death roll cannot be pushed if the, that optional roll is used. Uh, record the results of your death rolls in your character sheet. After three successful death rolls, you recover D6 hit points. After there are three failed death rolls, your player character dies. Rolling in dragon counts as two successful death rolls. Rolling in demon counts as two failures. If the combat ends, keep counting rounds until all death rolls have been made. So I rolled a roll seven. Death roll is basically versus your constitution? Yeah. Yeah. I rolled a seven. I have a, con, a, a, a 12 con. So I'm going to mark that in the con, success con. column. And I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna try and rally myself with a willpower roll at a bane, uh, target 14, and I rolled a four and a six. So um, you're up. Yeah, I ain't hear no bell. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, the iciness on his chest still remains. <laughs> yeah. So he that, still does not look very good. <laughs> he looks pretty bad, actually. Does that mean you're you, you don't have to make death saves anymore? Oh, no, no, I still, still have does. to make them, yeah. He's oh. just going with the zero hit points and going around doing stuff. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Yeah, not, not super smart, but I'm not a super smart guy. And that was fine. And rallying. Uh, I think this, that counts as... Okay, that does count as an action. So that that's my... That's your action? Yeah. Because the death, the death roll does not count as an action to do right. it. Right. All right. And he... Uh, Hey, bounces right back up. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then she goes. <laughs> Lady once more strikes out. Hopefully someone else. So, Kupo. Yes. <laughs> Is he in the seat? Is he not there? He's there. He's, uh, okay. he's still muted. So, Gorgon, as you sit poised and ready, having shot through her and had nothing effect, you're ready. And she lunges toward you, reaching out. As you've seen her reach out to to Brain a couple of minutes ago. Um, I cover my heart. (laughs) (laughs) And sort of, you know, sort of just like slams her her sort of ghostly, you know, hammer down. Springs out from her and strikes her. Attempt to evade now. All right. Um, do I need to roll again? Yeah. Okay. It's always best not to roll until I tie you, but yeah. Uh, this time, well, uh, yeah, this time I do not make it by far. <laughs> <laughs> you are knocked back four meters, which is to the wall, and take five points of damage from the impact. And you land prone. Ouch. Thank you. And that is her six, her seven. So, uh, my first instinct, I'm not going to grab the torch. I'm going to try and light an arrow, one of the wooden arrows from the torch and fire it at uh, the specter. Okay. So, let's see, it's a uh, pose. Uh, uh, that's an eight of under 16. That will strike. Does it seem to have any effect? I'm going to figure out. Yes, it does. Roll your, uh, just roll your arrow damage. Uh, eight, that's d12. Where is the damage? D12. Where is my... Plus D4, so 10. 12 points of damage. Are you serious? Yeah, <laughs> my long row is D, uh, D12 plus D4. Oh my god. Nice. Mm-hmm. Unlike the burning of her corpse, which seemed to have no effect on her incorporeal ghostly form, the flaming arrow striking her ghostly body does. It does almost seem to catch a light. <laughs> where her whole body is so this palish blue and dark grays and shadows. It blossoms in sort of a bright light and wettish flame that burns up and across her. She howls and it seems to be in some sort of pain, but it echoes the halls. 
she does not dissipate. But more chilling, there is a howl of a deeper resonance that replies somewhere else in the crypt. I think we made her angrier. <laughs> Stop helping. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's eight. That's me. So Dane runs over to the oaken door mm-hmm. and uh, observes it to see how it's bound, if there are writing runes, anything he can notice, like how, how it's locked. You notice the symbol on the, fir- on the the first time you came in here, obviously. It was a silver inlaid crown showing and depicting the, the dragon crown of the uh, dragon emperor, Elidane, on the symbol of the door. It is an iron, it's an oak door, it's iron bound, but one thing you definitely notice is that There is no lock. It just appears to be just closed. And are there hinges? Oh, there's hinges. Yeah, there's hinges. So does the door open inwards or outwards? Or opens outwards. Outwards. And you can, you know, if you... Well, I was going to say spot hidden. Yeah, you can do a spot hidden roll if you wanted to. Yeah. I will do a spot hidden. Seems fair enough to... Hit that one on the head at 14, and I'll do the other one... Uh, 13. Okay, so I passed both ones. Okay. Um, one, you can tell that the door, obviously the door is not locked, but that it has been opened from the, uh, it's been opened and obviously opened at some point in time. Recently. Like, it's not like, you know, it's recently been opened. As it, and the, as the scrape marks and the dust that's been moved shows. Um, but it's, that it has been opened. Um, as a matter of fact, I mean, but you can't really see it. There's no, there's nothing particularly attached to the door as far as like any wires, anything as you can see. Just that, and there was, like I said, no lock. Just it was simply closed. Okay, so no, and nothing, none of the this, the runes or the pictures or anything give any message or clue. Not outside the door, have you? In this, you know, no. Is, is there more writing around the door? No. Shit. Okay, I imagine that's going to take my turn. So. Right? Yes. Okay. So Corinne will uh, try to maintain her song and succeed and spend more up points to continue singing to this time. Yeah, she will continue with the boon for the party. Okay. And, uh, and that is it for all of them on this turn. Okay. Is that correct? Yep. Mm-hmm. So when should I begin? And like I said before, the improvised weapons, there's a torch still there, still there available, as well as a puddle, which is not really, that's not it, it's just a torch. It's, it's in the room, it's available. All right. Brain, Nathan? Yeah. Two. Two. Ooh. Nice. Moving up the chain. There you go. All right, Dane, tear? <laughs> Nine. Nine. All right, <laughs> Taking bookish Siggy? people. Chris, yeah, eight. <laughs> to getting tired. <laughs> Corgan, yeah. Oh. Ooh. A lady. We go on six. Six. And she would go on ten. ten. Oh, all right. And I'll draw another for someone else. Okay. Shit. <laughs> All right, Corgan, it's up to you. Right. I grab that I grab that fucking torch off the wall and try to hit her in the face with it. We'll just stay with grabbing the torch. <laughs> well, isn't there like part of the improvised weapon thing? Isn't it? Uh, yeah. You all just one? grab the torch. You got the torch. Oh, okay. That's the turn? Mm-hmm. Nope, you can now use it. Oh, good. Thank you. Oh, good. Yeah. All right, so I... Um, now, just to be clear, you said I was prone... From my last turn. Oh, wait. Can- that's all right. That's right. You were prone. I'm not sure if it's going to take any action to get up. Because, uh, Now, being all fair. Oh, Stan. Uh, you can drop to the ground or get up as part of your movement. These are free actions that do not affect your movement per se, but but can only be done in your turn. Okay. Yeah, you can move. You can get up and, yeah. Yeah. And grab and go grab the torch. Great. Well, so I'm, oh. I interrupted you. What were you saying? Oh, you can okay. For this, you can grab the torch. It uh, requires one free hand at least, um, because it's an improvised weapon. Improvised this one, the torch, um, the attack automatically hits. 
Oh, cool. Uh, you inflict 2d points of damage. 2d what? Points of damage. To what type of d? 2d6, I'm sorry. <laughs> I I forgot. Yeah, to <laughs> 2d20, 2d12. My bad. 2d100 <laughs> worth of damage. 2d6 <laughs> of fire damage. Seven. Plus any, plus any, if you have any uh, oh, damage bonus from your strength, um, add oh. that as well. Second. But if you had the strength of six of 13, you should. Yeah, I get an extra D. All right. That so a right. total of... <laughs> You get an extra D? God, I yes, you do. I feel so completely weak. Um, it's, but it's a D. A D what, though? D6? <laughs> D6. It's a D. D6. <laughs> did we just go over this? Yes, we did. I'm, the, <laughs> mojito. <laughs> uh, the damage is 11. Okay. Much like the other torch, when you strike... It hits home and she erupts in a white fly that seems to consume part of her as her sort of ethereal being. She wails again, screaming in anger as she begins to quickly dissolve. Ooh. And once again, echoing somewhere far in the distance, less not as far as before, but a deeper, more better tone yelled back. <laughs> Further away, like in Hoboken. As if someone or something is digitally also anchored by her anguish. And is moving. Have a close okay, let's go. Oh. <laughs> there is only one way out, you know that. There is no way out. The door is barred. So, guys, I believe her corporeal form is somewhere else in the vestige of mansion. We gotta kill it. Am I close? To which, no. Well, yeah. No. no. Oh, but, but, Bella oh. would say it's on fire right here. <laughs> <laughs> it. It's sitting at the damn table. <laughs> Ooh, I know what I'm doing on my turn. So, uh, let's see. That's that was one, two. Oh, if I live that long. Yeah, say right. I mean, th- does she just dissolve? No, she is still there. Oh, she's still there. Oh, she is yes. still there. No, oh, she's okay. not gone yet. All right, so uh, I'm gonna try one more time with the um, with the hammer. I still have a, a boon, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Mm, try one more time with the hammer. Uh, six exactly. Yes, that's what I needed. Okay, great. So how, how much damage does this thing, or uh, does this thing pass through her, or does it actually hit her? It actually hits her. Oh. Let me see if there's anything else I need to know about this hammer, other than its other properties. The handle is bound in a hundred foreskins, and <laughs> no Half, halfling foreskins. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't take a hundred foreskins to bound well, it. Small one. Only half, half, half halfling foreskins. <laughs> Maybe a hundred of your foreskins. It was cold out that day. <laughs> <laughs> During the harvest, it was cold. <laughs> its name is the Moyo. <laughs> so anyway, uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, let me just give you the damage for a small warhammer. A light warhammer, excuse me. It will do 2d6 damage, is what it will do. And I get d4 for my strength. Uh, 10. Okay. You strike with a small, with a uh, small warhammer, which, by the way, is beautifully, beautifully rendered and a magnificent masterpiece, as Baylor said last, last week, that it was a master craftsmanship. Mm-hmm. It strikes. And it's almost as if her whole body implodes into the disappeared. Ooh. And that cold wind fills and blows out the entire room. I look at the hammer and I was like, and I look at everybody else uh, around and I, I, I put it in my belt. <laughs> Just for everybody else, you do see that brain, brain strikes it and she dissipates as said. But he does not look good. Oh, yeah, the I need skin, to roll my... His fur looks ashen. There's still frost upon his chest where a hand reached in, and... I, I need to make two two death saves. I made one. I need to make another one. Uh, okay, I made one. I failed one. So I've... But I've even got... though he teeters the death ever present, the Grey Harvester can be seen almost ghostly behind him. Anyway... <laughs> Okay, on to three. <laughs> okay, so three. Okay. I guess, right? 
So we have eight, nine, right? Uh, I'm at uh, seven. No, I'm at eight. Seven. You're right. Eight. 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 You're right. Okay. On seven, Quickwing comes running back in the room. <laughs> Quiverwing. Quiverwing comes running back in the room, followed by Grub. Oh. <laughs> Snodrizzle? <laughs> ah, we've got trouble. <laughs> oh, don't worry, I, I just handled it. He's, so you, got, this one's wearing armor and has a mace. <laughs> so, can you even speak? No, this is not him. No, no, no can brains? Can brains even uh, speak? I he can, can speak. speak. He just looks like I can speak. Death warm over. <laughs> well, not really warm. Death isn't very warm, apparently. I mean, it's death fast in nuke five seconds. <laughs> anyway. Uh, that's what he does. Quiver ring and Grub comes st- rushing back in the room. Okay, that was seven. Uh, eight. Um, I go re- retrieve the torch from. Uh, Red the torch. Baylor had a torch, and Quiver Baylor wing had, a, Baylor Quiver had, wing had the, the other mag- magical torch. Quiver wing Corgan. had the magic torch as he came running back with it. Yeah, and Corgan grabbed the other torch. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, Corgan so grabbed I, the torch. I, and there's a lantern in the corner. Yeah. Where, where, where Corinne is playing or it's a bit well I go back and I grab that I say like, give me that <laughs> who are you grabbing what from where from oh, Corgan oh, oh yes the one I was using it to light my arrows <laughs> alright and my turn mm-hmm. I am going to spend three willpower points and use my heroic ability of intuition in what capacity will you be using your intuition I'm in to learn how to open this crypt door. Oh. Uh, I'm not going to make you do that. Okay. You, you you figure the way to open the crypt door is to grab the handle and pull. I just asked you last <laughs> turn how to, if there was a way I to open you, the... No, I thought you asked like if there was some kind of magic thing. I was like, it, it was open. It was obviously... I'm sorry. I, I oh, no. That. Yeah. no the like, way you, the way like, you described it, it was like, it, it's mysteriously <laughs> opened in the past and there's no <laughs> way to open it. I, I mean, no, they just had been opened recently <laughs> and they're actually just in the past. Oh, I, I, grabbed, I grabbed the fucking handle. Okay, okay, sorry. Okay. You are an absent-minded uh, yes, you, researcher. You're like, you're like, you never thought it. It's you're like, oh, wait, I could just try pulling again. <laughs> sorry, I just... Okay. I did not <laughs> he described I, everything. I, I did and a not, handle. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I should have... Been, and there's a handle. Okay, sorry. Uh, that, that's my bad. I, I just didn't hear you. That's great. So, <laughs> there is a handle. As we've established in Battle Lords, you're not great with doors. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so as, um, as a group, the uh, door swings open. Uh, it swings open rather, you know, rather easily considering its age and so forth. Um, this appears to be some sort of like obviously a barrel chamber with torches on the wall and walls and, and in, a, in a sort of like on the wall stands in the in the in the actual chamber itself. Um, and there is a sort of like small podium that's set up in there. There is an ornate sarcophagus. That is in there, and, a, and from floor to ceiling walls are made of like a stone brick, unlike the sort of earthen things. And there is a fresco that covers the entire far wall. Ooh. What's, what is the fresco of? So uh, the, the fresco is a a dragon mural on the back wall, which shows a knight riding a dragon and wearing the uh, wearing the sort of that same exact so the same exact sort of you know horned helmet and gear that you have seen on the um, on the statue. Slightly, I mean, there's, there's some variance you can tell. You're not sure if it's just artist liberty or is it a different knight? You're not certain at that point, at this point. But it just, it doesn't depict a dragon being being ridden by a knight. So wearing who, a huge so sort of crowned helmet. Riding a dragon or riding, riding, riding a dragon? Riding a dragon. <laughs> and above the uh, fresco, there is an inscription on the wall. Can I read it? Uh, sure, give me a... Languages? Yes, they good. Okay. It is partially damaged, but not, you know. But... Yes, with the bane, I make it. Okay. All right. Looking at it, um, it's hard to translate, but it says something about the Emperor's gift and a holy wrath. And I will consume all who dare to touch said guests and that kind of thing. Okay. Um, the sarcophagi appears to have been opened from the inside <laughs> by tremendous force. That is, the lid looks cracked 
and he's slightly really off the side almost. There are cobwebs and so forth, but you can tell that apparently whatever's inside or something, you know, something got out of there. Would there be a, a small portion of a statue anywhere? Do you look inside? Yes. <sighs> Looking over and peering into the circle. Baylor, bring the torch. Uh, Baylor will bring the torch. Okay. There on the bottom of the sarcophagi, you'll see a crown. A gilded crown imbued with subtle craftsmanship, and it seems to almost slightly glow. Is it the same crown that is in the picture? No, this one's much more, much smaller. As far as it's not like an ornate crown, it's more, it's, it's almost more like a sort of a circlet. Okay. That's meant for a man to be wearing. Does not seem to have the same lines as one. But yeah, as you know, but not a helmet, but a crown lying there in the dust. Any inscriptions on it or anything? Is it just plain? Um, you can't, I mean, even with the torchlight flickering, you'd probably need to pick it up to examine it. Very well. Okay. Touch it. Yeah, you're asking the absent minded professor not to do something. He's not going to. Yeah. I'll get to you in a second. Okay. Quiver Ring will tell you, Siggy, that it's coming. <laughs> it is. It is. He's, he's, he's a he's a he's a, de- 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 a knight, no, undead thing wearing armor, carrying a heavy mace, moving down. It's a, in, a, to which you know, Rob. He's not. He's gonna kill us all. We're going to die again. Nope, you're gonna die. He's trying. He's at the other propellers trying to key and going. It doesn't work from this side either. Oh God! And I just came. Oh, <laughs> he pees a little, and that's but he does. Um, you lift. The crown out of the sarcophagi. You hear the clicking whirl as you see a small, minute beaten thread attached to it break. Tink! And then a quick grind and the room explodes. Well, not explodes. Game over. Good night, everyone. Good session. That's the glory <laughs> of... <laughs> As... Ye oldy Claymore. Hardened steel blades fire out from all directions within the room. Um, so, um, you can give me uh, an evade roll. Oh, okay. For you. <laughs> um, everyone who's not in the sarcophagi room... Not, not in the sarcophagi room. Are we, are, we, are we still at a boon for this? Oh, no. Oh, I mean, one. Ooh. <laughs> wow, what a fucking time! I jump, I, I leap into the fucking sarcophagi. <laughs> Baylor, on the other hand, at, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know what Baylor's. Uh, just roll it. Uh, is. Just, he's fine. <laughs> I know he has some pretty average stats. So I'm gonna think. I think a nine will make it. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. nine does make it for him. I think yeah. a nine does yeah, make it for yeah. him. Yeah. I don't think he's great. He's able to flatten himself on the floor as a place. But you escape without being killed. Hooray! <laughs> With a crown in hand. <laughs> Meanwhile, what I do is overturn that wooden table against the uh, opening and try and set it on fire. Okay. Now, and I'll. Uh, I'm going to make another death save. Yeah. Before it made it, so I got three. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, oh, hooray. I got five hit points back. <laughs> so, uh, let's put it this way. You, uh, Siggy, you realize that, yeah, you can set the table on fire, or at least start it. It would go much faster if you had something volatile, much more volatile than just trying to just, and the wood is there and burning, but it's not going as fast. Perhaps the burning corpse? Um, there's the burning corpse you could toss down there. Uh, there's with also, her, I mean, and uh, with Karen. Her, her exquisite Karen chainmail. Will offer you a flask of oil. It's very expensive. <laughs> well, then we, I'll weed that fucker on there as well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That'd be great. Is to, as you do that, I need a light and just a scout of flame. <laughs> <laughs> Aziz! And, <geez. laughs> and the fire is burning. And in the and in the firelight, you see it coming. 
down the corridor towards you. And I may get the just heavy footsteps. Hey, we have a guy who does the sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. quit, quit it, you fucking hack. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we have a guy. <laughs> Striding down the hall. A huge warrior, an antiquated plate mail with a great horned helmet. His open visor reveals a grim skeletal face. He digs a heavy trowel with an awful sound of scraping metal as he drags his warhammer behind him. Look, our sound guy can only get so erect. <laughs> 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 yes. I thought he was Sorry. describing Sorry. the sound guy. Mood. Yeah. I, I was not describing the sound guy. <laughs> this is the weight that is coming for you. <laughs> We're gonna die. This powerful being moves towards you, seeing the fire. He just turns and then goes and disappears into the wall. Oh shit. <laughs> Oh, we're fucked. We're <laughs> fucked. <laughs> we're fucked. Moments later, at the <clears throat> South Percolis, some feet away, you see him emerge and appear and begin walking towards it. Mm. Can it move through the iron? The avoiding the, enter- the entrance blocked by fire. Which, by the way, I just want to point out, is the only Percolis that did work, but is now blocked by a burning table and a corpse mm. and, f- and flaming oil. And he cut as he comes to the next percolus, he just goes right through it. And the actual metal groans as his body passes through it in his armor and he raises his morning star. He says nothing. He needs to say nothing. As his cold pits of small, unforgiving light move over towards the burning corpse and then scan all the rest of you. I point to Baylor. He did it. And then there's just a... <laughs> slow, low wail that comes from it. Can I say something? And the room gets colder. Yes. So, in the language of the Dragon Empire, which I uh, recall now, I'll say this is the best I can. Um... In the name of Elidane, founder of the Empire, by the power of the sword of Rurum, Blade of Life, I beg you, grant us safe passage, so that we may continue to oppose the power of chaos in this world and fight against the powers of the Dark Log Sathmog. And he'll kneel. Mm. Ooh, you kneel. It's a brown target, excellent. Yep. I mean, yes. <laughs> 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 Why don't you give me a persuasion roll? Oh, well, I, I, that would be something that I need skills in. <laughs> oh, well, isn't this your day? Isn't it my day? Uh, persuasion. So, oh, you can, well, if you don't I, have to try persuasion, you can also try. Actually, I, if I um, could, because this is based you try on. bluffing. I was going to say, because this, I, I do have bluffing. I do have bluffing. I was going to spend the three willpower points if you wanted persuasion and use adaptive, but. It, I mean, the thing is. Which skill do you think will be really, truly most effective he, against an undead guardian assigned to protect this place? He, he would actually well, like to use performance. With the, okay. And uh, so I will use, I, if you will allow me, I will spend the three willpower points. I think probably, I'll be honest, probably persuade is what you really need. Yeah, that's what I mean. I'll spend the three okay. willpower points to use adaptive so I can have the persuasion skill. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, yes. All right. Uh, here we go. Eleven instead of thirteen. Uh, under thirteen, so I pass. He halts. He raises. He sort of lowers his morning star a bit, and we'll just stop there for the evening. Ah. <laughs> well done. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, well done. That was great.
Hi, this is Matt, the co-host of the Advanced Age Role-Playing Gamers podcast, and you've been listening to our latest actual play, Mirth, Magic, and Mayhem, using the Dragon Bane TTRPG from Free Lake Publishing, based on the classic Swedish role-playing game, Drakkar Demoner. If you like what you hear, please follow, like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel and anywhere else you find podcasts. We also really appreciate feedback and chatting with folks, so feel free to tweet us, comment on our YouTube, or leave us a review so we can reach even more people. You can also visit our website at www.theaarpgs.com, where you can read more about the cast, listen to old episodes, and even shop our store for cool geek chic merchandise. This story features Malcolm and Nathan as co-GMs. Malcolm will also be playing the role of Karin, a halfling bard. Nathan will be playing the role of Brains, a wolfkin thief. Our players for this story are Tyr as Dane Ringson, a human scholar. Sean as Baylor Banefire, a dwarven smith. Chris as Sigan, an elven huntress. Anthony as Corrigan Stonehammer, a halfling fighter and Tim as Quivering, the Mallard Mage. Character artwork created by Nemesis to Anthony Cupo and friend of the show, Jody P. Schaefer, whose work you may recognize from Metacopolix, Mari Kari, Megas XLR, and MTV's Downtown. Contact him when the time is right. You'll know how and when. Music licensed through Dark Fantasy Studios and SoundCube. Sound effects by Nathan using Krotos Weaponizer, Studio, and Dehumanizer using libraries from Boom Library, SoundCube, Krotos, and his own recordings. So thank you again for taking time to sit down with us at our gaming table. And until next time, remember, you're never too old to roll. So, so do we have time to uh, make our experience rolls? I or, think or, we do. Or tier do you have to go? I, I have time. Okay. You have time? Okay, excellent. All right, so let's just do our oh, advancement. Uh, should quick. we pause the, the roll? No, we, no, can go ahead no. And, yeah. we can go ahead and record this. And I'll just this will be recorded and we can just get Nathan makes these the shorts or something. These are the after yeah. credit scenes. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. sounds great. As soon as I find that page again. I, I'm I, looking at 39. Too. Oh, yeah, you're at 39. I, yeah, really I just pulled that number out of my ass. I think that's right. <laughs> it's okay. actually 29, but yeah. 29. <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah. So, all right. Gentlemen. Um, well, first of all, it's, it's kind of any a- skill that you guys rolled, a demon or a dragon on, make sure that's marked. I got it. None okay. of those. Yeah. All right. And let's go on for experience. Did you participate in the game session? Uh, yes. Okay. Did you explore a new location? Yes. 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 Well, I didn't. Yeah, we, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Tear did. Did you defeat one or more dangerous adversaries? I certainly did. I would say everybody, yes. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, did you overcome an obstacle without using force? Yes. No. Mm, No. Did you give in to your weakness? New opportunity to. Uh, yeah, so so I, I don't think that was. Uh, I, I'm going to say no in this one. Okay. So everything, every every question you're able to guess to, is a uh, is a, a point that can be used to advance a skill. Um, for those skills that you actually will a dragon or a demon in, that skill is one of the skills not included in that four that also can be raised. Okay. The role is very simple. Unlike the regular <coughs> mechanic of Dragon Bane, you must roll above the current skill level you have and forge for it to advance. All right. With a maximum of being 18 the highest you can go, which I don't think we're at that point to worry about that yet. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, I'm ready if I'm, uh, Yeah, you, go ahead. Go for it. Okay. All right. I'm going to roll my, uh, I'm going to roll my uh, dragon uh, roll, which was an evade. So 
Let's add 14 and a roll of 13. So no. Um, I am going to try awareness. I succeed in that. I rolled a 15 and, and my skill was at 13. So that advances. Uh, I am going to try myths and legends. Once again, that's at a 13 and a roll of 12. Uh, one, two, spot hidden. It's at a 14. And a roll of nine. And my last one will be, uh, bows. I roll a one. Oh. When I need it to, it <laughs> but that's okay. I'm happy. I got something. Yeah. All right. Who wants to go next? I'll go next. All right. Uh, I'm going to roll for my awareness, which is an 11. And I rolled a 6, so that's no good. Mm. And next I'm going to roll my evade, which is a 9. And I got a 15. Yay! Oh, there you go. Yes. Progress. All right. Uh, that's it for me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tony, you want to go? No, okay, Nathan. All right, so I'm going to do, uh, let's see. So I'm going to do, well, I don't know, where's my, where'd my sneaking go? Do I have that? Sorry, um, I feel like I'm missing something here. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I'm working off a, a, an older character sheet. Um, One so, with much, much lower numbers. Well, I'm just missing numbers. <laughs> missing so, Oh, there it is. Oh, okay. So, sorry. I just, it's the PDF thing. It wasn't working right. It, it only showed half. All right. So, I'm going to do, um, uh, I'm, since I swung the hammer, I'm going to go with hammers for my first one. And uh, my skills at six, I rolled a 12. So, that'll go up one. And then I'm going to roll... Um, I'm gonna go for uh, I'm gonna go for evade. This is gonna be a long shot here. I've got a 14 in already, all right, and rolled a 19. Nice, nice, yeah, it's a good pull. All right, <clears throat> um, I'm going to also go for evade at a 14, and I rolled a Three, so that was not a success. Mm. Um, and I'm going to go for um, brawling, which was, uh, I think that's a 10. So that was a failure also, so I'm staying where I am. Womp womp. So it's it's kind of neat to be able to have, at least have the opportunity to go every... every yeah, every game. Yeah. So you, yeah, yeah, and also you could we could react to the previous game like what would have helped you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Good, Good time. Thank, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, guys. All right.